Now, uh, when it comes to determining the pH of a substance, we have different ways of doing that. Okay, uh, we have litmus paper, we have pH paper. Uh, litmus paper really only gives us uh, a two color system. So if it's red litmus paper and it stays red, or if it's blue litmus paper and it stays blue, that kind of gives us some of the information, but doesn't give us everything. Okay, so it doesn't give us the actual individual. Uh, pHs, but it just tells us either acid or base. Okay, so here's how it works. In red litmus paper, red stays red in an acid, turns blue in a base. Blue turns red in an acid. Okay, so blue is for base. So red paper turns blue for a base and stays blue for a base. Uh, blue paper will turn red in an acid but would also stay blue as a base. Okay, so we have both colored papers because if you have something that's neutral, and you dip the paper in and it stays red, and you dip the paper in and it stays blue, so you find out, oh, if I'm neutral, we won't change either one of them. Okay, so having both colors there is kind of useful for that idea. Now, litmus paper is cheap, it's easy, it's fast, but all it tells you is acid or base. pH paper, uh, same idea, except for it has a color coding system that matches up with a, with a numerical value. Now, the pH paper is only, you know, a pH of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so forth. So the values there are not very precise, but it does give you more of a range in terms of what your pH is. Okay, and we'll use these in lab uh, tomorrow. So if you take a look, you know, you have a pH of 1 is red, a pH of 4 is kind of yellow, uh, a pH of, I think that's... 10 is kind of a dark blue. And what you do for pH paper is you just match up your color system and that gives you an idea of how what your pH might be. Again, not very precise, but it does work. It does give you um, a little bit more information than litmus paper. Still pretty cheap, still very portable. Now, indicators. So what indicators do is indicators uh, change color at a very specific pH. Uh, usually these are in solution where we have things like methyl orange that change colors right here at a pH of one, two, three, or right around pH of five, okay? Methyl red changes a little bit above that. So if you're trying to determine if something is an acid or acidic, acidic rain or not, methyl orange would be a great one because if you took a sample of rain and it was red, it's acid rain. If it was yellow, it's not acid rain, okay? Um, bromothymol blue changes really close to neutral, which is kind of a good one to have in terms of trying to find neutral. Probably the most commonly used one and the one I'd like you to highlight is phenolphthalein. Okay? Phenolphthalein is great because it's colorless. Again, that's the British spelling of colorless. It's colorless anytime you're an acid. And as soon as you turn to a base, you're pink. So phenolphthalein is used anytime you're trying to neutralize or anytime you're trying to get something to be not acidic. So basically you put it in and you can actually um, add base until you just barely start to see a tint of pink. And then you know at that point you've now neutralized your acid. And at that point you no longer have an acid, but you're pretty close to that 7 pH. Okay? Even though it does start to turn more around kind of 8, um, it's really close to that idea of 7 there. Okay? Indocarbon, again, another one. Not one that we use very often, but kind of gives you, it only changes way at the end of the pH scale. Okay, so uh, indicators are great if you're looking for a very specific pH working in solutions. Now the last one, is, and the most precise one, is actually to use a digital meter. So we actually have pH meters that can read this also. The beauty of pH meters is they can give you, you know, pHs down to the thousands place. So 1.345, you know, um, pH. Which is great for precision. The problem is they're very sensitive, they're very touchy, they take a lot of maintenance, um, and they're very expensive. So pH meters aren't necessarily the best tool to use unless you need that precision. So a typical chemist won't go to a pH meter unless they need you know, a higher level of precision. They'll use pH paper or indicators to do most of their work on a normal lab to lab type of basic stuff. Okay. Now, we're going to stop here um, and then we're going to go into a lab tomorrow and then we'll talk about the acid strength on another day. So hit this ends the video segment. Thank you.